Hello, this is David Coyle, and welcome to the next video in our series, Using the Terminal, Viewing and Parsing Data. Today, we're going to use the terminal to look at and parse some large sequence files that were generated by the experiment described in the previous video. Just as a quick reminder, we talked about researchers who were interested in gene expression differences between two plant crosses shown here as cross 1 and cross 2. Each of these text files represents an Illumina sequencing run that was then aligned to a cDNA database. These alignments were done using a program called Elan, which is the default program for Illumina analysis, but other sequencing facilities may use other programs. However, in every case, the end result is the same, a large sequence file that needs to be subsequently dealt with. So to begin, let's open up the terminal. I have the terminal over here in my dock, otherwise it can be found in your Applications folder. Resize this a little bit. The first thing we're going to do is just take a look at the alignment file using less. Less. Drag and drop one of these crosses. And I should note here, because I have the text size set so large, the lines are going to wrap, which is a little confusing to look at. So let's talk about what we see in this alignment file. The first piece of every line is the identification information from the Illumina sequencer, followed by the sequence, followed by the alignment information. Now here, at the beginning, all of the sequences are junk. They're full of ends, and so they're all listed as QC. There is no alignment. As we start to page down through the text, we can see that more and more actual sequence starts to appear until we get to a point where we start to see alignments. So let's take a look at the first alignment. So here again is the name of that sequence read from the Illumina machine. Here is the sequence itself, which still contains some ends, but has enough sequence for an alignment. Then these three numbers show the type of alignment. The first number is the number of exact perfect matches in the cDNA database. So in this case, there was one exact match in the database. The second number is the number of single mismatch matches. And then the third number is the number of double mismatch matches. Next is the information that describes the cDNA database. This is a publicly available Arabidopsis thaliana cDNA database. And then next is the gene name. AT stands for Arabidopsis thaliana. 3 stands for chromosome 3. Then the gene name, some positional information. And F stands for forward. It was, this sequence was found in the forward orientation. You can also see R. That sequence was found in the reverse orientation. Another thing I'd like to point out is this NM. This stands for no match. This means we had a sequence here that was high enough quality to be good sequence, but didn't match anything in the database. So just a reminder, what we're looking at here, each line is a single sequence read from the Illumina machine, of which in this case there's about 18 million reads, 18 million lines, and then the alignment information. Now what we're going to talk about is how to use grep to actually parse this file and break it down into smaller bits or remove unnecessary information before we perform an analysis. So to do that, we're going to press Q to return to the command line prompt. Just as a reminder, in the first video, we used grep to search for sequence within a file or to count the number of times something occurred in a file. And we can still do that here. For example, let's say we want to know how many no matches there were in this particular sequencing run. To do that, we type grep-c for count, nm for no match, and then we drag and drop the file name. Because this is such a large file, this is going to take a while. And we're back. And you can see that there are a little over 
million no matches found in this sequence. But what if we actually wanted to remove these no matches from the sequence before doing some kind of subsequent analysis? To do that, we're also going to use grep. We're going to use grep to create a new file containing a subset of the data. To do that, we type grep no match then the file name and then we use the right angle bracket and that signifies that the result of this grep instead of being displayed on the screen will be put into a new file with whatever name we give it. The easiest way I find to do that is to drag and drop this file name again and then just change it. So in this case we'll change it to cross one no match and we let her rip and we're back and you can see over here a new file cross one no match that should contain only the no matches let's take a look with less voila file containing only the sequences for which there was no match in the database we press Q to return but what if we wanted to do the inverse of that what if we wanted a file that contained only the ones for which there was a match. So to do that, we use grep-v, which stands for inverse, no match. And again, here we're going to use the original file. And the right angle bracket. Give it a new name, no, no match. So here we're going to grep for the inverse of no match, so everything except no match, and that's going to, that output will be put into a new file called cross one no match. And voila, now we have a file here, cross one no match. So here we have a file containing everything that did match, and here we have a file containing everything that did match. And as you can imagine, we could use grep to parse out whatever we wanted. We could take just chromosome 1, for example, or we could actually search just for a gene that we were interested in and dump those in another file, etc., etc. So you can use grep not just to search and not just to count, but also to manipulate sequence files in the terminal. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to do a sample data analysis using one of these crosses. Thanks for watching and see you then.